Hello everybody, I'm Colleen. Welcome to the Zoo's Home Safari and joining me, I'm Tammy. I am one of the other keepers here in the interpreter department. And today we brought a really special friend for you. This is actually probably my favorite friend in the whole world. Her name is Isla. Now Isla is a Tamandua. I'll say it again because people always get hung up on that word. Tamandua. And a Tamandua is a lesser anteater. But not lesser because she's any less awesome. Isla's the most awesome. Lesser because she's lesser in size than your giant anteater. So when you guys think of anteaters, you probably think of something black and white and gray, about five to six feet long that lives on the ground. This is not what you're getting when you look at Isla. When you look at Isla, you're gonna notice that she is a lot smaller and she's sitting up in this homemade tree that we have for her. And she's showcasing all of the really, really awesome things that she has that help her be able to live a life up in the trees. So Isla has some pretty cool sharp claws and those claws help her dig into tree bark and hold on really, really tight. Those claws also help her be able to eat, but we're gonna get into that later. Isla also has an extremely long tail and that tail is a prehensile tail. So it is used like another limb. So imagine if you guys had another hand, all of the cool things you could do and the crazy climbing you could do. So Isla uses that prehensile tail to help her climb around in the rainforest where she's from in Central and South America. Now I mentioned we were gonna get, we were gonna talk a little bit about what else Isla uses those claws for. And you might notice that I'm feeding her something right now. So I'm giving Isla what we call waxworms. And there's Tammy gonna give her a little bit of waxworms and mealworms as well. So she uses those claws to help her dig for ants. Being called an ant eater, you might imagine that that's what Isla eats a lot of. Precisely around 9,000 ants a day is how many a tamandua can eat in the wild. So Isla uses those claws to dig up ant hills and termite mounds and she, as she walks around the rainforest on the ground and sometimes even peeling back tree bark to get to those ants. But here in the zoo, it would be really, really hard to feed her 9,000 ants a day. So I give Isla lots and lots of worms. And then she also uses that long sticky tongue. You can, you can probably see her on your screen sticking out that long sticky tongue while she's eating. It can be about 16 inches of long. That's what she's gonna use to lap up those ants and termites. And that's longer than Tessa the giraffe's tongue. So if you watch that home safari, um, she's got a good about four inches on Tessa's tongue. All right, so we do have a question. Um, and the question is, why is her nose so long? So Colleen did talk about how she goes into termite mounds. Um, so she's gonna use that whole nose to stick it into the holes of a termite mound, just because uh, they're, they can't open their mouth. I don't know if you can watch her whenever she's eating. Uh, their mo mouth only opens up about the size of a pencil hole. And so she does have to be able to stick her entire nose down there to be able to get to things. All right, so what are baby tamanduas called? That's a great question because we've actually had a baby tamandua here at the zoo. Isla has had a baby before, and we usually call those babies pups. Um, tamanduas don't have a, a unique uh, baby name like a lot of animals do. We just call them pups, which is a pretty generic name, kind of like puppies, even though tamanduas and dogs aren't related at all. And something really fun and really cool about baby tamanduas is that they ride around on their mom's backs. So if you guys go on the computer and you maybe Google a picture of a tamandua, you might see a picture of a tamandua mom and a tamandua baby, and the baby will ride on their back about right here, right on their backside. So they're gonna climb up the tail and hold on right here. And they typically only have one baby at a time. Um, there's just not a lot of room in that tiny little tamandua belly for more than one because they come out pretty big. So uh, Isla usually only has would have one baby at a time and those babies stay with her for a year at a time. So she's taking care of them for a really long time. Now I mentioned a minute ago that tamanduas are not related to dogs, but does anyone real quick have any fun guesses what you think Isla might be related to? You can go ahead and type it in the comments real quick and I'm gonna count to five and then I'm gonna tell you. One, two, three, four, Five. Okay, if any of you guys have been joining us for our home safaris in the past, you might have seen one on Mo the Sloth. Now, you might think it's really interesting to know that Mo the Sloth is a cousin of Isla the Tamandua. So, sloths and armadillos and anteaters, they all belong to a group of animals called the Xenarthrans. Xenarthrans. It starts with an X, but it sounds like it starts with a Z. And Xenarthrans, those are my favorite group of animals because those, those are where all the animal oddballs are. 
All right, so what are some of their predators? What are their threats? That was a great question. Um, right now, unfortunately, one of the biggest threats that they're facing are humans. Uh, because we are taking away a lot of their land but they do face a lot of the other same predators that they would find in the rainforest just like mow the sloth uh, they would face like jaguars um, and other large cats that might come down um, and be, or be able to climb the trees to get to them so the cats and humans are really their two biggest ones yeah and tammy also i think that people might think that tamanduas make really good pets so oh, maybe sometimes yeah. they pull them out of the wild for that do you think that tamanduas make a good pet can you tell me why or why not <laughs> so we have another tamandua here his name is salvador um, and one of the worst things about salvador is his smell so believe it or not we have a lot of people that'll walk around the zoo and they're like oh my gosh it smells like a skunk out here that is actually our tamandua they smell just like a skunk um, and it's a way to kind of keep away predators because if they're is a predator around and you've got this really putrid stinky smell you're less likely yeah. to want to interact with them um, another reason they don't make great pets we've talked about those claws a little bit they dig into everything now isla has been here with us for several years and colleen has done such a great job getting her used to being picked up getting her used to being handled and everything but they typically are not like that uh, so we would not necessarily want to um, have one in our house as a pet at all Alrighty, so we got another question about where do they sleep at night in the wild and where do they sleep at night in the zoo? So I'll tell you first, in the zoo, Isla lives in the Animal Ambassador Center. So as soon as the zoo is open again and all of this yucky virus goes away, you guys can come to the zoo and you can visit Isla in the Animal Ambassador Center, which is next to the children's zoo. So she's got a big, nice window where you can see her maybe in her, um, in her house and she likes to sleep in her bucket. So once in a while you might see her in her bucket and she might peek her head out and say hello to you. And then in the wild, these guys are gonna sleep in trees where they live most of their life. So they only come down to the ground if they need to go to the bathroom or if they are looking for ants or termites. But most of the time they stay up in the trees. All right, do we trim her nails? That's a good question. We actually do trim her nails on occasion. Um, we want them to stay long so that she can dig, but we don't want them to get overgrown. So they will somewhat naturally uh, kind of shorten themselves whenever she's climbing around on tree branches. But just like your cat or dog at home, we do want to try to keep them a little bit short. The other thing is we don't want them to curl around on themselves. I don't know if you can see her hands right now. Um, they're pretty long and whenever she's walking, she'll kind of grasp them close. So we don't want those nails to go into that soft part of her hand. Yeah, they can actually puncture themselves. Exactly, so that's something we don't want to do. They can't, you can see her walking around on her back feet really well right now. Uh, she can't do it for too long, but she's a pretty good walker standing up. Um, so, but what's interesting is if you do watch her walk around on all fours, they curl those nails under. So it's really hard for them. So that's why they're better at trees than they are on the ground is because they, they kind of walk on the sides of their hands, almost like on their knuckles a little bit. So it's a little bit um, funky for them, right? Because you can't really walk on those claws. You can't walk upright on those claws at all. And we want to make sure we keep them sharp in the wild so that we can tear open those anthills and termite towns. And we have another question. Um, we, a guest wanted to know, are they active during the day or at night? And when they're active, what are they doing? Well, these guys, funny enough, I know we have her out during the daytime, but they are primarily nocturnal. However, they're pretty loosely nocturnal. So these guys, you might see them up during the day occasionally. Um, I was in Costa Rica one time and I did see one and I saw it around 11 o'clock at night. So it was, it was dark at that point. But Isla, living in a zoo with her keepers, she is used to being up and awake when we are because that's when she can get attention and that's when she can get food and that's when training happens. But in the wild, when these guys are awake, they're gonna spend most of the time looking for food because it takes a really long time to eat 9,000 ants in a day. 9,000, if you guys can count that high, I'm very, very impressed by you. <laughs> so it takes her a long time. I always like to say you can look at her eyes too and how small they are. And yeah. that's a good indicator of whether an animal is um, a nocturnal animal or not. Uh, because typically the nocturnal ones have some smaller eyes. That's a fantastic point, Tammy. Yeah. It also brings up another really great point. What do you guys at home think that Isla's greatest sense is? You can go ahead and type that in the comments, but I'm just gonna tell you right away. If you guys look at all the things on Isla's face, you've got these giant ears and some tiny little beady eyes, and you've got a really big nose. So 
we can use that to tell us that probably her sight isn't her best sense because her eyes are so small. But look at this giant nose and these big ears. So those ears help her know if there might be predators around and that nose helps her find her food. So one of our questions we got is, uh, why do they smell so bad? We kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but if you're just joining us, they do put off a really skunky smell. And part of the reason for that is so that if they come across a predator, uh, a predator is less likely to attack them. So if you can imagine, like we might come up on a piece of like rotten fruit that smells bad, we're not gonna eat that, right? Because it smells really bad. Kind of the same thing for them. Uh, if a predator finds a tamandua and they put off this really bad odor, they might think there's something wrong with it. Yeah, that's great, Tammy. And then also, tamanduas use their scent to communicate with each other. Tamanduas smell about four times stronger than a skunk. So when they go somewhere, just even walking by, their smell is gonna stay there. So then another tamandua knows, at some point today, there was a tamandua here. And then they can meet up and become friends. Okay, so we just got a question that I am really excited to answer. Um, somebody asked, do they go to the bathroom only once a week like a sloth does? That's a great question because they are related to sloths, but they do not. They actually go to the bathroom every single day, just like we do. Uh, they do, it's kind of funny, Isla has a water bowl that we give her, a giant, basically it's a litter box. It's, it's a full of water, it's a potty. Um, and she actually will go there and use the bathroom. So it's kind of nice and easy to clean up for us, but she does go every day. Okay, Colleen, how long do they live in the wild and how long do we expect Isla to live? Tamanduas just live into their teens, um, basically in the wild and in human, human care, they'll live into their teens. They typically live just a little bit longer in human care because they don't have the same sorts of predators and illnesses and things facing them here. However, tamanduas are doing pretty well out in the wild. They're not endangered or anything. So they're doing okay and they live a pretty decent lifespan. And we hope that Isla lives forever. That's my personal <laughs> hope. She's gonna outlive all of us. I hope so. <laughs> oh, we got a really fun question. What noises do tamanduas make? So, when little tamanduas are born, they scream <laughs> for their moms. If mom walks away from them, they're gonna scream and call out and it sounds like nothing I've ever heard before. Maybe we can get the zoo to post a video at some point of the sound, because I've got a couple videos. But the only other noise that I've really ever heard a tamandua make is growling. So tamanduas can't open their mouth any bigger than a pencil, um, which is a little bit smaller than my pinky even, is about how big she can open her mouth, because they don't have teeth. So it makes it really hard to make a lot of noises, but she can growl using, using all of the special um, biology she has in her throat. So if a tamandua gets close to another tamandua and they are not friends, they can growl to scare that other tamandua off. Kimmy, do you want to get this next question? Oh, who is their favorite keeper? Well, oh, I guess I'll be honest about this one. So Colleen here has worked with her since she came here and she is definitely by far her favorite keeper. They have the best relationship and I'm learning so much from them but I definitely have to give it to Colleen. She is by far the favorite keeper of Isla. She's taught her so much. However, Isla is a sweetheart and Isla loves everybody. She really, <laughs> really does love everybody. All right, so what is Isla's favorite food? Um, actually, this is a perfect time to pull out my last treat. This will be a good opportunity Honey. to see the too. Yeah, so Isla really, really loves honey. Now in the wild, they actually might come across some beehives up in the rainforest, up in the trees, and they might be able to break that open and <laughs> break it open and get to some of the honey. So Isla really loves it. And we use these really cool tubes so that you guys can see just how long her tongue is going in. Sometimes she gets so into it, she just lays down. She just <laughs> lays down and eats her honey or does a somersault. That's really silly, but she also really loves those wax worms that you guys have seen us feeding her for training and things. I hear they're kind of like candy in the animal world, but I've never tried. Have you, Tammy? I have never tried a wax worm. I can be honest about that one. 
Um, okay, so Colleen, you spend a lot of time with her. What would you say out of everything that she has is her favorite toy or enrichment item that we give her? Her favorite toy and her or enrichment item, her blankie. Yeah. Isla loves wrapping up in blankies. So sometimes I know the zoo definitely posts pictures on Instagram and Facebook of Isla maybe in the morning when I go to feed her breakfast, all wrapped up in her blankie. So she sleeps in a bucket and she actually pulls the blankie over her head and she snuggles up with it. So she really likes to be cuddled and cozy in there. <laughs> Can you hear her slurping? That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, her slurping is super loud. They actually, I guess I wasn't totally honest a minute ago, another noise they make is they sniff really loud. But I don't just mean sniffing to sniff. They actually sniff to talk to each other sometimes. So when Isla gets to hang out with her boyfriend, because I forgot to tell you Isla has a boyfriend, his name's Salvador, and when she gets to hang out with him, they <laughs> sniff really, really loud to each other. And I know that means they're talking. <laughs> Oh, that's really attractive. This is the reason I leave the honey for last. She gets <laughs> extremely messy and she gets it up her nose. <laughs> All right, so we did have another question. Do they carry their babies, the moms, the females? Yes, they do. So after the baby is born, they're gonna ride around on their back. And uh, it was really funny. Um, whenever Manny, the baby was really, really little, he started riding around and she was really good. He was really good about holding on, but he decided that he wanted to ride out around on mom's back until he was basically the same size as her. <laughs> That's right. And it was just really hard to watch. So she'll climb all over the enclosure with him on her back, um, all over the tree branches and everything. So she's really good at it, but they have to learn from a very young age how to hold on to mom properly because when mom's ready to go, Baby's got to tag along. Yeah, I was really impressed that Isla weighed about 15 pounds and Baby weighed somewhere around 12 pounds and he was still <laughs> crawling right on top of her and um, riding on her back. All right. Oh, how long do they carry for? Oh, so how long is a Tamandua pregnant? That's a great question. So we actually have done a lot of research here at the Cincinnati Zoo on Tamandua pregnancy and gestation. That's what we say when we're talking about how long an animal is pregnant. And Isla here was pregnant for 167 days. <laughs> so that's, a, that's not a very long time compared to humans who are pregnant for nine months, but 167 days and then out came baby Manny. And are they endangered? I don't know, they're not. Uh, luckily, they're just like sloths. They're not endangered at this time, so that's kind of nice. Oh, you guys are getting to see those claws in action right now. Um, she's not trying to dig in the ground. She's trying to get to, back to her honey tube, but it's a good chance for you to see her claws working. So She does love to lit, dig in the dirt, though. That's another favorite of Isla's. Sometimes we put her in different places with dirt, and she just goes crazy, digging tunnels even. Yep. Oh, does she like bats? No, they are not water animals at all. They don't swim or anything like that. So um, that would not be her favorite thing to do. Typically, whenever they're hosing just to clean up, she's gonna stay away. And they so. can swim in the case of an emergency, but they don't typically choose to. Okay, guys, so activity time. You guys have a really good shot at seeing Isla's tail. <laughs> I'm sorry, she wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh, you can see Isla's tail right here. It is a prehensile tail, but if you notice, it's about the same length as the rest of her body, so it doubles the length of her. So for your activity, we have a template online for you guys to download, and we want you to make your own tamandua tail. So measure how tall you are and then make a tail, whether it be out of fabric or paper or whatever you have laying around the house that's the same length of you that mimics what a tamandua tail looks like and then attach it. Now we wanna see those designs with your attached tail, but don't forget to stick out your tongue just so you can look just like Isla. <laughs> that's a lovely face. And quick shout out to Ira and George. I know you guys are watching and you really love Isla, so I want you to know she says hi and she can't wait to meet <laughs> you someday. Um, and lastly, guys, um, right now we are doing a special, or we're working with Cincy Shirts um, to try to help out not only us, but our local community. Uh, so you might see the shirts that we're wearing. They are available for purchase on Cincy Shirts and the zoo does get a kickback from that. They are so lucky, or we are so lucky to have them that work with us on a regular basis. And this is just, the next thing to be able to help all of us in this crazy time that is our life right now. So, uh, and if you're not interested in a shirt from Cincy Shirts, uh, please uh, click the donate button below um, and donate to the zoo. We would really, really appreciate it. It's gonna help us keep taking care of animals like Isla here every single day.